Hey everybody, uh, welcome to uh, another opportunity for us to reflect together on God's glorious word. We're looking at the letter of Colossians, a letter that Paul and Timothy wrote um, to a, a group of churches actually, not just one church in Colossae. Uh, and we're in chapter two and we reach now one of my favorite kind of sections of Colossians, possibly of the New Testament. It's just such a, a glorious, um, a glorious passage. So this week, as we go through just very few verses, um, try and grab, grasp the, the kind of magnitude of what Paul is sharing here. So first of all, chapter two and verse six. So then in light of all that he's already uh, talked about, in light of what we were looking at last week, in light of what we've been looking at over the last few weeks. So then, he says, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Many uh, people, when I ask them to share their testimony, uh, how has God been at work in your life? Their answer to that, their response to that, will refer back to the time when they first became a Christian, when God, often miraculously, always beautifully, um, kind of uh, came into their life. They accepted Jesus as Lord and, and turned to him, uh, asking him to be their saviour. It's beautiful, it's lovely to hear. But it, I do worry that sometimes that actually we kind of, um, it implies that our only experience of God at work in our lives was from often way back when. For me, it, it's kind of, I don't know, nearly 40 years ago, for goodness sake. Uh, and surely, surely this God has been at work since then. Gosh, I hope so. And I hope that's true for you. So uh, what strikes me in this verse here is that continue to live your lives in him. You've received Christ. In my case, I received Christ when I was, I don't know, 18, 19, 20. Uh, and, and since then, I have tried to live my life in him. I've tried to live in a way, uh, and I've often failed to live in a way that delights him and pleases him and honors him. I, I don't get it right by any means, but, but that's, that attempt, that striving, that straining, to pick up a phrase that Paul has used before, of, of wanting to live in a way that glorifies him, in a way that expresses him. Uh, uh, we need to be thinking about this. And, and what Paul is doing here is encouraging all his readers, all these believers, to continue to live for Jesus. So conversion and the, the Christian walk is not a once and for all event. It's not something that happened on a particular day at a particular time, and that's it. Living for Jesus goes on and on and on. And all the time, God is wanting to reveal to us more and more of what it means to be Jesus-shaped, Jesus' uh, Jesus's disciples. And as we live our lives for him, then those opportunities become more real um, and, and I hope more noticed. So here's my reflection, continue. Continue to live your lives for Jesus. Don't just stop uh, at that conversion moment. But in everything that we do and in all that we are, we're to be living out what it means to be disciples of Jesus and living out what it means for his life to live in our lives, to be seen through our lives. Oh, and friends, please, when somebody asks you to give a testimony of how God has been at work in your life, Think about something recent. Think about how God is at work in your life today. Uh, it may be very much smaller. It may feel less significant than the day you first became a Christian, but it is wonderful to hear. And it is a delight to hear how God is at work today. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you that you are at work in us every day, every moment of every day. You're at work in us right now and you're helping us to live as Jesus-shaped disciples. Please uh, go on enabling us to live lives that reflect Jesus in all that we do. Amen. Bless you. I hope that's helpful. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Take care.